Hello everyone, uh, <clears throat> this is Edward King in case you, uh, are not, if you're new here and you're not familiar uh, with uh, my audio slash videos. Uh, essentially they're audios. Uh, I uh, usually have the camera pointed at the Holy Bible. Uh, sometimes I have it pointed at other things, but uh, I'm not here to make spectacle of myself or be goofy or anything. Uh, I, I just um, I'm just trying to get a message out, and uh, this is uh, part of uh, a series of uh, I'm working on called the Inversion Perversion, and uh, I hope that uh, God blesses you with this message, and um, that uh, you you benefit from it, that you truly prosper in in what I'm sharing here. Uh, this is uh, video three. Uh, video four uh, touches on anarchy, and uh, I just thought that, uh, or no, actually, video four touches on. I think it, uh, it, it it's uh, gnosticism or, or gnostic. Anyway, that sort of stuff. But uh, I don't have much time here, so I'll I'll get to the point. Um, I I don't really throw a whole lot of scripture in these uh, audio things that you can listen to while you do your emails and your Facebook or whatever it is that you do on your computer but that's why I've tailored them this way so that uh, they don't demand you know that you, you watch my video but that you just listen to what I say here because uh, I'm trying to respect your space and I'm hoping that you could use this message to your benefit um, but I actually do know the Bible fairly well. Um, not as well, maybe, as some. Uh, I'm not into the whole rote memorization game. But um, I, I, I've actually uh, <clears throat> taken some scriptures here to share with you. Uh, scriptures that I remember and scriptures that I, I took out of the Bible uh, and uh, because I don't have so much time to really elaborate on this a great deal, I just want to explain uh, something here, if I may, uh, with respect to the inversion perversion. You see, today what is happening is uh, with the whole gender egalitarianism and uh, unisex and metrosexual uh, 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 deal this agenda that it's going on and has been going on for generations and now it's it, it's become full-blown and we're reaping the the benefits or <laughs> more like the consequences of that uh, we, we we now see you know ourselves in, in a great deal of trouble and confusion is is, is reigning throughout our society and uh, it's serious it, it, it's a serious situation and, well, now I want just to focus more in terms of husband and wife, because the inversion perversion began there in the garden with Adam and Eve, as I mentioned in my first video. And I just want to elaborate on some things. So we'll go back to the garden for a moment here. In Genesis 2.18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Okay? The woman, Eve, was to be Adam's help meet. Now, I realize there are some people who have other Bibles. Uh, I recommend the King James Bible, but I won't, you know, elaborate on that too much uh, because I just don't have the time in this video. But they'll, they'll, you know, work it out like the word meet is M-E-T-E, -E, meaning that, you know, as to meet her, to measure up, to meet him in the middle type of thing. <coughs> <clears throat> well, um, to an extent that may be true, um, that she is supposed to be the one who uh, picks up the slack, so to speak, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, picks up where he leaves off, uh, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, in terms of meet, M-E-T-E, -E, as to meet her. But um, actually, uh, that old English word meet is, is synonymous with mate. Um, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to elaborate that uh, a great deal. I, I, I'd like to carry on 
with uh, what exactly the woman's role uh, uh, in, a, in a good and godly marriage should be. And in 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter 3, it says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. The type of fear we're talking about here is godly fear. It's not, it's not ungodly fear. It's, 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 uh, uh, in the Greek, it, it, it meters more on, on respect, but you'd have to go into the Greek to, to look at that. And I know many pastors and people frown on that, you know, let's keep it English. But yeah, there is such a thing as godly fear, and um, <clears throat> evidently Paul knew that um, what we are facing here, uh, so many generations down the road, was something to be very afraid of. And now it's full blown, and we can see by the, uh, the destruction of our society uh, that uh, there, there, there was definitely something to fear here. And uh, what, what, it, what it is, is it's this inversion, perversion. But uh, I'd like to continue a little bit more with Scripture. Uh, Colossians 3.18, I'll try to keep it quick. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Okay? Now, I know some do argue that submit doesn't mean that the wife has to uh, uh, bow her head and and uh, put herself on, on a lesser status with men and you know she does not have to uh, 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 be uh, lowly and, and, and all that. Well they're wrong she's supposed to be lowly okay and uh, she is supposed to definitely understand her place in her marriage and that her husband is, his, is her head and the husband is over his wife. I'm sorry folks but that's that's the way it is in marriage you don't like it well there you go. This is what you have. All you people who've rebelled against the Word of God, this is the society you're living in right now, and now uh, you've got a bad case of inversion perversion. But uh, I want to continue with uh, the scripture on this. I, here we are at the book of Ephesians 5.22, uh, verses 23 and 24. Uh, so we've got verse 22 here. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You see, now, that's why you have to lay verse upon verse, line upon line, precept upon precept. Because, you know, the neo-feminists could jump up and say, as it is fit in the Lord. That's what it says in Colossians 3.18. Well, it is fit in the Lord. But, you see, in Ephesians 5.22, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So there's no, you know, question. There's no wiggle space here, Okay. That is how the wife is to, supposed to submit herself unto her own husband, as unto the Lord. Okay? Verse 23, For the husband is the head of the wife. Oh, didn't I just say that? Yes. Even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Verse 24, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives, <clears throat> let the wives, plural, be to their own husbands in every Thing. In, in what things? You know, because there are some say, well, only in this area is she supposed to be that way, or only, only when it comes to the children, or only when it comes to, no, no, no. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every thing. Okay, 1 Corinthians 11, 3. We're, we're moving along here because we don't have a lot of time. But I would have you know, that the head of every man is Christ. Okay? The man, he is answerable to God. I know some people don't believe Christ is God. Well, that's their problem because uh, we have to understand what Christ is. And I don't have time to elaborate on that. But Christ, uh, the, 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 the blessing, the anointing, the spirit, the spirit of Christ, that's Christ. But uh, I don't have a lot of time uh, to, for that. Uh, maybe in another study. And the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Okay, that's that's the, the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit is the head of Christ, the person of God. But uh, moving along, it down to verse 8. I want to drop down to verse 8 because this is really important. For the man is not of the woman, 
but the woman of the man. Verse 9, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Now, what was she created for the man for? What was the purpose? Why was the woman created for the man? We go back to the garden, right? Here it is, again, Genesis 2.18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. Now, I know there are some pastors out there who say, You see, the wife is not supposed to be his companion. No, no, she is also his companion. And I can prove that. There's a scripture that also declares that the wife, the man's wife, is his companion. She is his companion and she is his help meet. And that was the purpose for what she was created. All right. Now, there are neo-feminists out there that want to counter scripturally and say, uh, in, with uh, Galatians 3.28, they want to say, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now that's true. There really isn't. If, if you really are a follower of Christ, <clears throat> okay, and, and you are definitely born of the water and of the Spirit, and you know the Lord, there is no Jew. Hello? There's no Jew in the body of Christ. But this is spiritual. All right? This is spiritually speaking. Paul knew. Paul knew that we would still have to dwell in these mortal bodies of flesh and blood. And for that reason, Paul uh, established uh, some very stringent guidelines where uh, it was made uh, clear to the assembly that the man was indeed the head of the woman. And that while we are in these mortal bodies of flesh and blood, the man is the head of the woman. All right. There's no escaping this uh, position, this duty, and this humility, if you will, for the woman. And there is no escaping this humility, if you will, for the man. Because the man has to bow to his Lord and Savior every day, all the time, and is answerable directly to God for everything that he does. And it is a humility uh, before God that he must bear. And the wife must bear her humility uh, to her husband in much the same manner. In everything, says the word. Now, <clears throat> spiritually, there is neither male nor female. I'm talking spiritually, okay? A spirit, in and of itself, does not hold gender, okay? It's a spirit. Think about it, all right? Uh, but spiritually, that is the case. And when, when uh, we move on into the next world, what, what did Jesus tell uh, those uh, Pharisees? He said that in the resurrection, there is neither male nor female, for we shall be as angels. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Okay. So I'm taking it down to earth here, and I just want to... Uh, elaborate on on that part of it because the inversion perversion has now uh, taken uh, the responsibility of a man and has perverted it uh, in such a manner that men today are are uh, <clears throat> being oppressed uh, with the idea that they must be their wife's help meet. Now, God didn't say, I'm going to, I'm going to convert Adam into a help meet. I'm going to make Adam uh, Eve's helper. So, you know, he, that, so he'll have something to do. No, 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 no. That's, that is not what God did. God realized that Adam was alone. God realized that Adam needed a companion. And therefore, God made Adam a help meet. All right? So, what's happening now with the inversion perversion is now the man is being made to feel that he is his wife's help meet. And uh, he is obligated to pick up the slack wherever she falls short. And this is a trap. And this is a very deadly trap. And it's destroying families. It's destroying marriages. 
So be careful. And God bless you. I love you. I hope that you got something from this video. God bless you.